together today. Um, today is, um, we're celebrating Ascension Sunday, which is 40 days after Easter. It wouldn't have actually been Thursday. We remember and we read the story of Christ's ascension into heaven. Now, we typically think about that in context of the Apostles' Creed, don't we? Right? He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Um, we have that whole section of the Apostles' Creed where we think about what the ascension means. When you sit down, what does it usually mean? You are finished, right? You're done your task. So he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Jesus' task has finished. And now he sends the Spirit so that his work on earth can be completed. So then we'll celebrate Pentecost next week. So today we're going to consider what the ascension means for us, that Christ has all authority and power. So as we come to worship today, our call to worship comes from Psalm 47. So it's located on your worship paper on the left-hand side. If you want to read, I'm going to read the regular print. Respond with the bold print. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. So our first hymn is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Now, just a reminder, with our new regulations, we are allowed to sing, but you must keep your mask on if you're going to be singing. So uh, please sing with me, but have a mask on while you do the singing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
As we come to our time of confession, we remember that line from the Apostles' Creed that Christ becomes the judge of earth and heaven. And the good news is that the judge is on your side. When we confess our sins, he gives us forgiveness and new life. So let us pray together our prayer of confession. It's in the green box on your worship paper. And afterwards, we'll have a time of silent prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Now silent prayer. People of God, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Will you say with me the glory be? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. Friends, you have been declared at peace with God. Therefore, we can be at peace with one another. At this time, you're invited to pass the peace of Christ by turning in your seats and waving to your neighbors and saying, peace be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. So our scripture today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. So this is Luke, the doctor, the apostle who is writing to us. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote, about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set up by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. So do you know that moment when you're watching a movie and it seems like you're getting to the wrap up or the end and then you, you check the tape or you check the uh, streaming and there's still like 45 minutes left and you're like, there must be something else that's gonna happen because I thought this movie was getting to the end. It felt like it was done, but then there's a 
plot twist, right? And we have those moments in our lives as well, right? When we feel like we've reached some ending point, some things are finishing up. We might be ready for a certain phase to be over and then surprise, here's more time in that phase or here's something else to think about. It can happen to us in various, sometimes painful ways. We might have struggled with a sickness or a cancer and we went all the way through the treatment and you're finally home, but then there's all this healing that has to happen and life just doesn't go back to the way it was. You feel like it's an ending, but it's a beginning in a way. Or sometimes um, those of you who may have recently moved into a new place or an apartment, there was so much energy expended in the move, isn't there? Like you, you spend all this time and energy figuring out what you're doing and then you get here and you realize, oh now there's all these new beginnings and what I need to do in setting up the new place and connecting with people here. Or sometimes we find it um, when we face the loss of a loved one, where we say to ourselves, I never imagined being in this place of living life without this person in it. Feels like there's an ending, and yet we're called to go on. There can be overwhelming anxiety about what's next. And when it involves a death or a separation, there can be great sadness as well. So I want us to hear in our reading today, Jesus' disciples felt like they were at the ending of the story. They had followed him around for years. They had, Jesus had died and been raised, and they were fully convinced of that. All their doubts had receded. He was really back alive again. And they had settled into this kind of newish routine. Jesus would appear and teach them. They could sort of understand what life looked like. And then this passage happens. And do you hear what they asked? Lord, are, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You might say, what does that mean? What are they asking? They're asking, okay, is everything over now? <laughs> Is this done? Are we moving on? Are, are, is, is the kingdom getting established? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know timing. <laughs> the timing that God has set. And then Jesus proceeds to ascend out of their sight. You wonder, did they know that was coming? Did they know that was going to happen next? And I, I sympathize with the disciples, because what do they do? They stare there looking at the sky. For so long that God has to send an angel to say, what are you looking at? <laughs> Why are you keep looking at the sky, men of Galilee? He's going to return the way you saw him go. We sympathize with that feeling of looking and not knowing what's going to happen next. Being surprised, being weary, thinking about what is next. So the angels tell them, stop looking at where he was and think about what he taught you to do next. It's a surprising thing to happen, but we get it. Because when one part of our life has ended, even if it's joyful or if it's painful, we can get stuck, right? Looking back or standing, thinking about that space in our life, what we used to be. The process of letting go of what is behind and going forward and transitioning into what is next. It's one of the most challenging places of life, figuring out how to go from that to what is next. This Ascension Day story gives us some good perspective to think about when we are in those transition places. First thing I want us to see today is that God still has plans for you. If you are at an ending and thinking about what is next, it's emphasized in a couple places of, in our passage that an ending time is also a beginning time. Think about it. Where are we in the Bible? We're in Acts chapter 1. And he chooses to, uh, the writer chooses to put this episode at the beginning of a new book. 
can help us think about how sometimes endings open new beginnings. And when the angels are there talking to the disciples, they tell us that Jesus will return. And that's helpful for us to hear today as well. That we are not left alone in this world, anchorless with no plan. That this chapter that you are in is a middle chapter. A middle chapter between what was and what will be. And for us as a group, as humanity, it's also a middle chapter between what was and what will be. So whatever transition you are in with your health, with loss, you're not on your own. God has a plan for the world and a plan for you. And it involves that hope for the future that one day God makes everything right. That for those we have lost, we will be reunited with them in God's kingdom. And for the things that lay ahead, somehow they make sense in the scheme of God's world. So the disciples, when they ask, you know, is it time for the kingdom to become? Jesus says to them, it's not for you to know. All the times and seasons fixed by God the Father. It's not quite the answer we would like, right? We'd like the next, the, the next little bit mapped out for us about all the things that are going to happen next. But what does it invite us to? Trust in God. That God sees us. He knows us. He knows where our next pathway will lie. And that there's nothing that can happen in this world or beyond that can terrify us or hold us against our will because Jesus is ascended and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You have an anchor in your uncertain times. And there might be a million opinions about what you should do in transition. But we know that God has a plan. And God is for you. So Jesus tells them that this is a new beginning and that there is new tasks for them to do in this passage. Um, he says, wait in Jerusalem, verse 4, and you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses, beginning here and going throughout the world. So he tells us there's these tasks ahead for the disciples, and there's these tasks ahead for us. But first he says, wait. Wait in Jerusalem. How does that relate to us? What guidance can we get there? It tells us when we're in transition, it's okay to wait for a while. To wait, to pray, to think. When we feel like we don't have power or guidance, to not jump into the next thing, but wait for the Holy Spirit, ask for the Holy Spirit, because God promises us power and guidance there to wait patiently and prayerfully for what God will do. Now, I was thinking about waiting. Sometimes we think about waiting as just, we have to do it whether we want to or not, right? We just, we're just spending time. But I was thinking about when we use waiting as a verb. Do you know, like when you go to the restaurant and someone waits on you? That's an active kind of waiting, isn't it? It's like an attentiveness to their customers. So if we thought about that as what we are being asked to do, to wait on the Lord, it means like being attentive to the Lord and being attentive to your inner person as you wait for God to show you and guide you for what is next. So it should involve things like prayer, being together with the people of God, having some quiet time wherever it renews you. It might be taking a walk in nature or spending some time at the beach or spending some time in the quiet in your apartment. Those moments of waiting to get the clarity that we need. And then what does he say our task is? You will be my witnesses. So for the original disciples, they were to talk about everything they had seen and heard over the last few years. And we too, in our transition places, are called to be witnesses. Now, hear me here, because I, I think we have a certain Christian way of thinking about witnesses, right? Witnessing is what you do when you tell someone about your 
faith. But what if witnessing is also as simple as telling your stories about where you were and, may, and how God has been involved in your life? And maybe that helps make sense for you and for others about what comes next. You will be my witnesses. You will learn to talk about where you've been, where God has shown up for you. We are called to tell our stories throughout all the places that we are. Our tasks, when we think about what's next, they always involve other people because you can't witness to yourself. <laughs> you have to be telling your stories to others, connecting with them. That's part of the guidance here. I thought it was interesting that when Luke put together the beginning of um, this gospel, uh, the first verse, it says, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught. And actually, in the original languages, it means all that he began to do and teach. Kind of telling us that the, after the resurrection, after the ascension, there's more that he wants to do and teach us. And it comes from these waiting periods for the Holy Spirit and taking up the tasks of sharing our life and stories with others. So we may have been through some things recently. Things are wrapping up. We might not know what's coming. But we're encouraged to not live in fear or trepidation. There's one other chapter coming, and it may look different than what we expected. But here in the Ascension story, we're encouraged to know that God is for us. God is with us. God will guide us as we wait for him. And there's a promise in this passage. Did you hear it? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power. Think about that. You'll receive strength. You'll receive ability. It reminds me of that verse from Isaiah that so many of us like. Uh, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. So friends, if you're in a tra tra transition time right now, wait on the Lord. New hope is coming, new vision, new strength. And you can go on then with direction, hope, and the power of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Remember, if you're going to sing, please have your mask on.
As we come to our prayer time today, is there any prayer needs or praises you would like to share with the group today? Tiana. Yeah. Yes, praying for Kurt and for Ken. Who else? All right, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Lord of life, we do not know the future any more than your disciples did. And like them, we have many questions. How to live, how to bear witness. Like them, we thirst for the waters of the Spirit to inspire us in our living, to give us a heart language in our testimony. You have been raised in glory, that we might rise with dignity. You live in power, that we might live in peace. You are present everywhere, that we might be fully present in our own lives. This we believe, this we step out on, Lord, where we are in those transition places, we pray for one another, that we might have your guidance and your hope and your peace. Lord, you call us to drink freely of the well of life and to share in the love of your holy being. So we say, fill us today with your spirit anew, with your hope for today and days in the future. We pray now for the needs of the world. We pray that there might be peace. We especially think of Israel and Gaza and the Palestinian conflict. Lord, let there be peace there. We pray, Lord, for the healing of the virus. We think of India and other places that are really struggling. Lord, send healing. Send healing in our nation, Lord healing of sickness and healing of the deep divisions in our country and lord we pray for the needs closer to home we think of our friends kurt and ken and ask for your healing and strengthening touch we pray for ourselves for the burdens we came to this place carrying and we pray as christ taught us our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, friends, receive the blessing of the Lord. Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten from the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. May his blessing rest upon you. Amen. Thank you. 